In the 1960s, famous director Michelangelo Antonioni made a couple of revolutionary films with legendary actress Monica Vitti. This led both of them to have a cult status in the film industry. Continue watching to find out how this actress managed to be so successful despite her horrible childhood. Who is Monica Vitti? A lot has been written about Michelangelo's amazing films, but almost all of them take the form of critical appraisals or reviews. And the saddest part about it is that it doesn't talk about the actress that appeared in this film, Monica. What most people know is that both of them had a strong bond together. The director even considered Monica as his muse and lover. And while there is plenty of material available about other Italian actresses, there seems to be almost nothing said about Monica. You cannot find a lot about this actress, even if you search the biggest British library. But even though we don't have this luxury, she still remains one of the most enchanting Italian actresses in the world. Monica was a very versatile actress who can easily adapt to playing challenging roles in which Michelangelo cast her in. The actress had a miserable upbringing. Monica was born Maria Seccarelli in 1931 in the metropolis of Rome. Unlike many other children, Monica had one of the unhappiest childhoods a girl could have. She was belittled and bullied by her family and had a horrible relationship with her mother. As being the only daughter in her family, she felt as if she was treated very differently from her brothers. When talking about her past, Monica said that she had really strict parents. They gave her brothers all the power and freedom they could have and did quite the opposite for her. The actress always saw herself as a powerless child. Her family life was so traumatic she never liked the thought of creating a family and marrying. But at the age of 14, she found that acting was a good way for her to escape the problems she faced at home. At the same time, Monica made her first stage debut. The actress found joy in making other people laugh through her performances on stage and on screen. But by the end of the day, she would still return to her difficult life and her family. When Monica turned 18 years old, she moved to the United States along with her parents and her brother. After moving to the U.S., the actress decided that the perfect stage name for her would be Monica Vitti. To no one's expectations, the actress started her career with a massive bomb. Her acting was unremarkable, so she decided to go on a tour in Germany with many other Italian actors at that time. In the mid-1950s, Monica was offered a role in Niccolo Machiavelli's La Mendragola, filmed in Rome. But after she took part in the film, she would start struggling as an actress and worked in theaters just to make ends meet. During the late 50s, Monica also appeared in a few movies and TV shows, but the rules she was given were too insignificant for her to gain massive recognition. Her life changed when she met Michelangelo Antonioni. In 1957, Monica was recognized by Michelangelo Antonioni, who then offered her to be a part of his forthcoming film called The Cry. Here, Monica only had to do the voice of reporter Dorian Gray. While she was acting out the role in the studio, the director realized that the young woman had a great appearance to be in the movies. This decision would later become the turning point of her life. Even though the director's background was very different from Monica's, both of them were great at writing scripts for screenplays and creating documentaries. They realized that they had one big similarity, which was being passionate about their work. This later made them fall in love with each other, both personally and professionally. The first and most epic collaboration was called La Ventura, which took two full years to produce. In an interview, Monica claimed that nobody was willing to give her a chance at acting. It was only Michelangelo that was willing to give her a chance. This did not only make her a famous actress, but it also made him more successful as a director. The first film they produced was originally criticized and even provoked booze. But the tables would soon change a couple of days after the film was released when a group of famous filmmakers that were led by Roberto Rossellini believed that the film could become a hit. Critics claimed that they were surprised by the displays of hostility the film had brought up, but they remained anxious to show too much admiration for the director of this film. Because of all this criticism, La Ventura won the festival's special jury prize and was nominated for the second greatest film ever made. In 1961, Monica even won the Golden Globe Award for the Best Actress. The actress turns to comedy and tragedy films. After making a lot of money from filming her project with Michelangelo, the actress buys an apartment in the heart of Rome. But even though Michelangelo wanted to move in with her, her hunting past would make her refuse to live in the same apartment as him. 
But since both of them had a strong bond, Michelangelo just decided to buy the apartment directly above her with an inside staircase that would connect his house directly to her house. Both actress and director were lovers and their romantic relationship would last over a decade before the couple finally decided to split up. But before they broke up, the actress made an unexpected U-turn with her acting career. As her reputation grew, the offers she received in appearing in different Italian films increased. Even though Monica was not interested in moving to Hollywood for a better opportunity, she was still afraid of getting typecast in her own country. That is why she switched from Michelangelo's angst-ridden films to creating comedy films in the 1960s. She later spoke about this, saying that she realized that she had a lot of talent when it came to acting in comedy films. It was impressive how Monica could recite tragic roles and transform them so that other people could laugh. Monica only understood what an extraordinary gift she had after becoming massively successful in Italy. In the mid-1960s, the comedy genre alla italiana blew up all over Italy. It was a movie genre that combined usual comedy with social satire. Monica was one of the first actresses to act in films with this kind of genre, which led her to become massively successful. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Monica also worked with many international film directors, such as the 1974 film called The Phantom of Liberty. But outside of Italy, the actress is mostly remembered from her appearance in the 1966 movie called Modesty Blaze. The actress took part in a few more films during the 1980s. She also made one last appearance in Antonioni's film before she finally decided to announce her retirement in acting and become a performer in theaters and an acting teacher. During her career, she has also attempted to become a writer and director, but these attempts gradually faded as she was more talented in acting. In 1985, the actress finally decided to marry and tied the knot with Roberto Russo. But before marrying him, Monica has been living with Roberto for over 10 years. Unfortunately, she would not enjoy her marriage too long, as just a couple of years after getting married, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Well, that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more about legendary actresses of the 20th century, make sure to subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.